In the gallant days when history hung on the flight of an arrow or the slash of a sword. When feudal barons ravaged the countryside to live in pomp and splendor. It is truly colorful, exciting, fascinating entertainment every minute of the way. Moon Sea Adventures. Hello and welcome back to the Moon Sea Adventures. The crew is here. They have had a week off in the city of Melvaunt. And uh, each one of you guys kind of did some different things that you wanted to pursue. Um, you, you kind of looked into things, followed up on some, some leads. Um, and I'll ask each one of you to briefly summarize what it is that your character uh, did or learned about. Um, I'll start with Niels. Yeah, um, <clears throat> Siler has been hanging around at a uh, couple of bars, uh, <clears throat> trying to ascertain what uh, of any news coming from Flan on our uh, great escape. And so far, uh, the reports have been mixed, and none of them ring true. Um, there's talk of like pirate treasure um, being sequestered for uh, return to the original owners and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but so far, there's no warrants out for our arrests that I've been able to ascertain. Um, and let's see, we'll go to uh, Angler. Angler, you have some contacts, Thieves Guild contacts, and uh, uh, from your criminal background, you, you know kind of how to quickly get information from the network of criminals in the area. What were, your, what were you able to learn about? I figured out there's two sides. It's the fish heads who work the docks and the skinned rats who do the uh, West East Road. And uh, what kind of news did you ascertain from that? That basically no trade has been coming in from the roads and no none have been leaving from the sea. Good. At least since we've gotten here. Um, all right, and let's go to Harley. Uh, Harley, you had a little bit of a more supernatural opportunity to check things out through your uh, ever-faithful, familiar murmur. Uh, what were you able to discover? Yeah, I discovered that uh, some of the uh, animals that uh, we helped to deliver to Melbourne were distributed uh, west and east of the city and uh, Murmur is still uh, searching for any clues that may, that may help us in further investigation. And because of my vanity, I bought a new clothes in the meantime. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and yes, um, and you have a very nicely tailored uh, nobleman's kind of uh, attire now. Um, what was Murmur able to find out um, about where the different cargo animals that you guys had found in the cargo hold of the Blessed Trident? Um, where were those animals kind of going in the region? Well, a part went back towards the flan and par went to part went towards the uh pensia and because of probably because of that um, maybe something is spreading like a disease or something like that and maybe that's the reason why Trade isn't going into the into the Melwand anymore. Um, good, and and I will follow up with you on additional things that Murmur discovers. Um, Ushun had a very different kind of approach. Uh, Ushun, what were you kind of looking into and doing during the downtime? Well. Um... I want to add a minion, you know, basically someone I can train. So I went to the orphanage to look for some sturdy girls. And I heard out, heard that uh, the orphanage population has tripled because 
parents have dropped off kids because they're afraid there's, there's some kind of illness in the surrounding farm areas. And they either dropped off their kids and never came back or the kids, the parents didn't even make it to the city and the, the uh, kids made it on their own or the eldest kid herded up all the kids when the parents told them to and went to the city. So quite a few um, kids in the orphanage. Uh, some of them uh, are being adopted. Some of them are headed toward the streets. I needed uh, to have proof of citizenship, income, and a nice place to live in order for them to adopt to me. So um, I'm going to look for a street kid. That's where I'm going to find my minion. Less paperwork that way. All uh, right. Sad. <laughs> um, you guys, and, and it's by the time kind of all this has been done, um, you guys have been staying at modest accommodations, let's say, um, to, to avoid, you know, too much um, cost of living while you are, you know, kind of in a downtime. Um, and, and both Siler and Angler checked in pretty regularly with your new contact from the Red Plumes Mercenary Company, uh, the human man in the white suit who identified himself as Mr. Noble. Um, and you know that he is based out of the Twin Barrel Brewing Company, um, but you, you know, you've know, you checked in with him periodically and he basically tells you uh, that you know no work has come in, um, that in, in fact, things are oddly very slow right now. Um, and, and so as you guys have filled your time, um, Harley, you actually, get a, a, a contact from Murmur. And Murmur tells you that um, he has been following the, you know, the land caravan of these, you know, peculiar and infected animals from Melvant to Fentia. And he says that the caravan stopped and they, they unloaded the animals off to the side of the road and then they released them. That's strange. And he said, now they, the the men that were in that caravan are coming back quickly towards Melbourne. Stay with them. Stick to them. Stick to them, to the animals that have been released or to the men? To those men. I want to know what they are up to. Okay. So a few days later, um, the men have arrived back in Melbourne. Murmur identifies them for you. Um, and it looks like they are part of the gang that Angler was able to identify, uh, the gang known as the Skinned Rats. So I conveyed those information to my compatriots and, well, what should we do, guys? They just dumped them Somewhere on the road. I don't like that. Interesting. Um, you guys remember uh, Mensrick, the the wizard sailor that you guys met up with? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, at, at a certain point, and this is you know maybe like whatever, almost two weeks after uh, you guys had gotten to Melbourne with the ship. Um, you, you run into Mensrick and he's actually on his way to the Twin Barrel Brewing Company to look for work and he runs into you guys. Uh, and, and he tells you that um, he's checking to see if there's any, basically he like, he seems very stressed out and, and, and kind of like nervous. And he, he, he says, have, have you guys gotten any work? Have you, does anything come through? Not at all, man. Well, are you waiting around to find work or are you leaving? I, I think I'm leaving. Something's not right here. I, I've heard some weird rumors. Yeah, and we have some weird information. He, he says, well, I, I might see if I could either catch a ship 
to to the east over to Fenchia, uh, or or back west to to Flan or or hills far or somewhere. Well, if we're going back to the Flan or Fenchia, just to warn them. There may be some evil forces on the horizon. He's I don't want to. I don't want to uh, risk your life, and I don't want to tell you um, anything more that's necessary. But it has something to do with our cargo. He's like, I. I kind of got the suspicion that it had something to do with that. I. I... I heard a rumor from another wizard who was leaving the city a couple days ago, and, and he said that uh, there's some of the, the higher level nobles, they're trying to keep it a secret, but there's some kind of sickness going around, some kind of plague. And, and anyone who, who develops the fevers and, and the pox from this plague, um, there's these symptoms that they have and, and, and that they're they're trying to, to hide the people so that there's no big panic. And they, they don't want to disrupt their trade business, so they're trying to, to to hide it. But I've heard that it's it's a bad sickness. Nobody yeah, quite so knows what the cure is for it. Those animals are spreading it probably, and they dump them randomly on the road. Well, I don't understand. Why would they pay so much money for cargo to to be brought in and then just dump them? They probably want to spread the plague far and wide. But, but why and who? I, I I don't understand. I just I just know that I I don't want to fall to any plague. Yeah, and that's why we are here. <laughs> Trust me, man. If you're going anywhere else, just warn them. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna see if there's any work, if I can catch uh, a, a a job that would pay and get me out of here. That's the best opportunity. Otherwise, I'm on my own coin for trying to find passage out of here. Be careful, man. He says, "You you too." And he he walks away. Um. Perhaps we can. Uh make our own job by tracking down these animals and hunting them. Well, it's improbable that we'll find all of them. But we may make our own job. Probably no coins involved, but, you know, we may just find out who's behind that. Maybe well, those maybe those are the same people I'm searching for. Well, Siler and I have experience with these animals, and I think as long as you're not bitten, you should be okay. But I think we better stock up on some healing potions and disease protection. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's that's just my thought. Yep. Maybe we can just do this on our own, as you know, preventative and. Maybe we can find out who's oh, uh, doing that's, stuff. That's one option. And as we are in it, we may ask around the skin dread. I know a few people that we may ask to. You know, those men that dumped those animals beside the road. We may talk to them. I know how they look. Huh. So you you actually because Murmur was following them, you know where like one of their uh, their base of operations is located. So what are same guys? Well, I think I want to go to the. Uh cargo companies and see who's uh, who's doing a uh, caravan out of the city. Maybe we can take it to a different city farther away and then get a caravan there going somewhere else. Just uh, right on my board that there hasn't been any caravans in a while. 
coming in or going out. Both. Yeah. Oh, well, there's got to be there's got to be some low life merchant who wants who wants to take things out of the city on the on the sly. Yeah, but the rumors mm-hmm. are spreading fast. And the rumors are already out that some unknown disease is spreading around the city. So, mm-hmm. what do you think who would risk their life? We should look into it. Not because, not because I care about other people, but this may be fun, you know. <laughs> so, um, after ten days, you guys begin to notice that, like, some of the places in Melvant that would normally be packed with people. Um, like the fish market at the docks, for example, or the um, market row on the north side of the city of Melbourne, where all the shops and shopkeepers and craftsmen are. Um, these areas are not as crowded. Like it's like people are not out and about as much. You still see people kind of going to and fro, but like you don't see as many people out as you normally would. I'm going to an apothecary shop. Okay. Because I know they have to hire people to pick herbs for them. Yep. And I ask them uh, if they're sending out herb pickers. Um, You go to the apothecary shop. The wooden shutters are closed. And there was a wooden sign on the front door that says closed. Go around the back. Okay, you go around the back. Is there a door? There is a door. Knock on the door politely. Okay. A moment later, you see the face of a young, actually kind of young human woman um, pull back the curtains and like look out at you. And you, she, she's, she's like staring at your face and your eyes and like she's like what do you want and she looks around um well i was gonna buy some potions if you had any and uh, i also want to know if you need any guards for your herb pickers i don't have anybody going out to pick herbs nobody's come in three days but you sent them out i sent people out five days ago where do you usually send them or where do they go do you know there's a verge of wild prairie and woods just north of the city before you get into the far. It's a kind of a hilly area. There's a lot of great herbs, if you know what you're looking for, that grow in, in the hills and valleys in that area. Yeah. Also a lot of good fungus, too, if you know what to look yeah. for. Yeah, I don't know much about that, but I do know about, about people going out. And it's... Uh, from what I hear, it's pretty dangerous. Um, I may have a group of people who may or may not agree to going out and finding your pickers for you. Um, the pickers are just folks in town who yeah. know what they're looking for and they bring things to me to sell them to me. And then I turn those things into actual useful ointments and tinctures and, and extracts okay and, and uh I, I i don't know a lot about what what these people do and where they go but i'm certainly not going to risk anything okay would you risk uh a cure disease and uh a couple uh healing potions i don't have any cure disease Potions. I wish they've I they've been they've been bought out, huh? They were bought out about three weeks ago by yeah. a really rich nobleman. I didn't recognize him. I don't think he's from Melbourne. I was kind of surprised, but who am I to 
complain. I mean, he paid over my asking price and bought my entire stock. Okay. She said, I, I, I sent out a group of people who were looking to pick up money with the specific herbs that I needed in order to make more of the cure disease potions. But she said that it, it, they never showed up. Okay. Um, tell you what, I'll talk to my, uh, my compatriots and maybe we can go out and at least retrieve their packs. At least get the herbs back for you. She says, are you new to town? Why do you say that? Well, she like looks out again. She's like, is anybody with you or around here? I don't know. She says, haven't you heard that there's like a, there's a plague? Yeah. Well, aren't you concerned that you're going to get it? Well, when I get it, I'll be concerned, but uh, I don't have it now. I could sell you a potion of healing if you want. I've got one left. Okay. You have 50 gold? Yeah. She says, all right, hold on. And she, and she closes the curtain. A few minutes later, she comes back and you see she has this um, thick green glass potion with a cork on it and she says she opens the door a crack and she puts out a little wooden box and she goes put the coins in the box okay I do that and then she takes the box and she sets it down on a table and then she puts the potion in the box or she dumps the coins out on a table puts the potion in the box and then passes the box out through the door again okay I'll take the potion so this is a one d four plus two or something? Uh, no, this is a this is a standard um, healing potion. Uh, it's one d eight one. Okay. All right. I don't remember well, if it's one d eight or two d four plus. Uh, it's two d four plus two. two. Yeah. Okay. Well. So, so she tells you that. She, she says, to, to the best of my knowledge, the the four um, the four harvesters went out, you know, five days ago and should have been back three days ago and haven't returned. And uh, they went north of the city. Yeah, she says, I, you know, I, I if you're able to recover um, any of the supplies that are useful and you're able to bring them back here. She said, I, I will I will split the the proceeds with you. And if there's enough materials, I'll I'll give you basically 50-50. So she's basically saying, like, if you can bring back all the stuff and you have somebody who knows what the ingredients are and you're able to gather enough stuff, she will make whatever amount of potions of cure disease that she can make, and she'll split those with you. Sounds good. I'll uh, present it to my group. She says, "What? what's your name? Ushun. Ushun, I'm Rihanna. Be safe. Okay. I'm also, um, as I'm traveling around the city looking for stray kids, Um, okay. You, so you guys, you guys know what the location is for, uh, where, where the skinned rats kind of have their, their base of operation. Um, you, you know this because Angler knows the, the, the inn, it's called the Crooked Crow Inn. Uh, and it's in the north side of Melbourne. And, um, and you know that these two guys that, had that shipment that they dumped off on the road um, because Murmur followed them back and they went back to the Crooked Crow. So you guys, if you want to follow up with that, you know where they are. Wrangler, what do you say? I know you're not saying much, but I'm a bit fed up 
with this situation. We may speak with those guys, well, politely. And if it's going yeah. well... <clears throat> well, I'm not sure if I want to chase after these sick animals. It doesn't sound <laughs> like a smart idea, but... Yeah, but we may figure out who's behind that. Who's buying... Uh, who's uh, spreading all those animals and why? Yeah, that could so, be interesting. So what do you say, guys? Let's talk a bit with the stocks. <coughs> right. So are you, you guys are going there while I'm at the apothecaries? Or or they, you could all go together. Okay, we'll all go together. Okay. So, I tell you about the apothecary deal. I'm all, all for right. it. Okay. So, I mean, do you guys want to go daytime, nighttime? Are you just, are you like trying to go in, you know, stealthily intimidated, you know, with, with what's your kind of move? How are you approaching this? Oh, I was think I was thinking about um, uh, catching up with those two guys when they are probably around the inn or when they are leaving in, probably during the evening or early night. Okay. Are we allowed to carry weapons openly in this town? Yeah. I mean, if you murder someone with weapons, then constantly mm -hmm. they get called, but everybody pretty much carries weapons. Okay. Then I'll come fully loaded. <laughs> okay. Um, so, so you guys want to head over there in the evening? Yeah. Okay. So um, you, you head over to the, the north side of the city. And, um, you know, you again, you kind of pass through uh, Shopkeeper Row and, and it's it's very quiet. Um, like most of the shops are closed um, and and it's still early in the evening. It's not even night. Most of the shops are closed. Um, you do pass by um, the shop of Broodmoir Ironblade, uh, the dwarf weaponsmith, who I think, Harley, you had contracted to make you a special weapon uh, and you notice that his chimney fire is not going and his doors and um, window shutters are also closed you up ahead um, you guys kind of see the three story crooked pro in um, and it's it's kind of a strange sort of building the the first level is is all stone uh, but the second and third levels are wood and they they kind of look like the second level was built initially and then the third level was built out on two ends of the second level. So there's like two big rooms on the third level with like a deck, a rooftop deck in the middle between. Um, and there's like a wooden kind of railing and fence that goes around the top. As you guys are approaching, you haven't even gotten to the building yet. Um, let me see, I actually, I don't know if you would know this. Um, go ahead and make perception checks. I'm not very perceptive. It's nine. Oh, it's natural 20. 17. So, so 19 for me. Minus one. Big A. Okay. Um, so Ushun, you notice that there's, there are two guys up on that third level rooftop deck that look like they're on opposite corners. So basically between the two of them, they can see all the way around the building and, and the roads coming towards the building. Um, I, uh, and you notice I, they uh, don't have torches. They don't have torches. Um, they, they look like they're just on top of the building and they're kind of silhouetted by the setting sun. I nudge Harley and I say, guards upstairs. Harley, when you look up, you see these two guards, but you notice an additional detail. Um, you notice that 
the one on the corner closest to where you guys are approaching from uh, definitely has pointed ears and white hair and very dark skin. His clothing is also dark, but he has very dark skin. Well, I see them pushing watch there. And I uh, uh, no, sorry, gr- I, I greet them very loudly uh, in undercommon. Uh, I'm looking away from Harley. I'm kind of sidling away from <laughs> uh, Okay, what do you say in undercommon? Because Siler is the only other person in your group that understands this. Greetings. Nice evening, isn't it? Um, you notice that there's there's a bit of movement, like the head turns slightly to, to where you guys are at. And then turns and walks around one of the upper level rooms, like maybe to go inside of it, you're not really sure. Okay, we'll probably wait here just for a bit. Okay. Uh, welcoming so, party is coming. How far away are you guys? Uh, I was assuming that this was like, that you were like 100 feet away and, and approaching the building. So do you want to hang back that far or? Well, it's good distance. Mm-hmm. Not the microphone. So as as you are waiting, you notice uh, that there's there's nobody coming into or out of this inn, uh, which seems odd because it's kind of evening is oftentimes when people get into eating and drinking, and it's very quiet. Like you don't hear any any music, you don't hear you know the sounds of drunk people laughing or yelling or anything. Okay, if they aren't coming for us, we'll come to them. All right, so a few minutes go by, you wait. Doesn't seem like they're coming to you. Um, you guys walk I'm up right, the building. I'm right behind you, Harley. <laughs> okay, let's go in. And so, I'm just casually walking in. Yeah, so the, the main the main door into the tavern is actually not on one of the, the four walls. It's on a corner. So it's on like, the it's, it's built into the corner. Um, and you notice as you're approaching that the door is um, closed. You don't know if it's locked or not, but it's closed. And all of the the windows, the wooden shutters are also closed. I'm still looking up okay. for archers. At this point, you're under the overhang of the front door. So they can't see you, you can't see That's them. That's fine. Um, so the door is closed. So I'll, I'll try the door and if it's um, locked, I'll probably gently tap very, very so you, politely. You try the door, it is unlocked. You can actually open it. Okay. It looks like we're in for the business, guys. Okay. Don't walk I'm in heading. like you're scared. No. I'm walking in like I own the place. Okay. Um, you remind me again what guys you are taking. Are you like the standard human that's uh, not very recognizable, like kind of just a basic human noble, or what do you look like? Uh, well, um, as I saw those, uh, or that drow, or I assume it's drow. I changed my appearance to look uh, slightly more elvish and a little bit uh, uh, of a great tinge to my complexion. So maybe like a half elf, half half drow. Uh, half, half half drow. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so you guys go in. You upon opening the door, you see that there are actually people inside. There's there's a single bartender uh, who looks like he has a very stocky build, uh, wide shoulders, and he seems very tall. He looks like a dwarf, but he seems like he's about six feet tall. Um, 
and he's kind of behind the bar. Uh, he's not working very hard right now because it seems like the three people sitting at the bar are just sitting there and talking to him maybe or with him. Um, there are three other tables in the large open space and across from the entrance is a is a fireplace, but the fireplace doesn't have a fire going in it at this time. Um, there are three tables, like I said, with a mix of people and everybody's pretty quiet. There's no there's no sense of of like celebration. There's no laughter. Um, you don't smell food. You know, it's just literally people with wooden mugs of ale. Um, when you guys come in, you notice that a couple of the people at the tables kind of turn and look and then they go back to their their tables and their drinks. Um, the only person who consistently maintains eye contact with you is the burly guy behind the bar. He looks over at you guys as you enter. And you see you see him like like literally studying, like he's looking really closely at you. And you hear him say, Hold up right there. Stay where I can see you. I'm scanning the rest of the room. And you hear, you see him put his mouth over, like a, his hand over his mouth, and he begins muttering something. And then he reaches down and picks up a coin off the bar and puts it in his hand. And then you see a bright light emanating, and he throws the he throws the coin up, and you see he's just staring at you guys as the light from the coin kind of illuminates the area where you are. The coin hits the ground and lands right in front of you. And this bright light is kind of illuminating you. And he says, probably, about, probably as it's so bright, I'm keeping the act and I'm uh, covering my eyes just slightly. Okay, so you do that. He, he looks at everyone else and he says, uh, you there with the mask, take off the mask so I could see your eyes. I'll do it. And when you do it, he he kind of like falls back. And he's like, oh, he, he's, he you hear him whisper under his. Uh, actually, who speaks Dwarvish? Yep, I'll take I do. Me. Oh, Siler, Siler, and Ushun. Uh, you hear him say in Dwarvish to the three guys sitting at the bar who are not dwarves. You hear him say like, "Birdfall, it's birdfall." And then he looks up and he says, "Uh." Okay, you're okay. And he looks at Siler and he looks at Ushun and he says, Okay, you're okay. He, he says, You, uh, what are you? Let me see your eyes. I just put my hand down with closed eyes. He says, Oh, okay, okay. It's a, it's a bit and bright he, for me. He mutters something and then the, the, the light on the coin winks out. And he says, All right, you, you, you could come in. You could sit at the bar or have a table. There's one empty table and there's uh, about 10 empty stools at the bar. I I crank my head over to the table and I start walking over there, pulling out chairs for everybody. All okay. Right. Make sure everyone is down. seated and then I'll sit down. Okay. Um, about two minutes later, you see the burly guy look over at you guys, and, and he uh, he just yells. He says, uh, "Round of ales." Yes, please. He, you see, he starts filling. He turns around to the tap and he starts filling up these wood mugs, puts them on a tray, and then a moment later, you see he he seems to duck behind the bar, and then you see the tray get picked up, and he walks over. And in fact, he's not a burly guy; he's an actual dwarf. And he must have been standing on something because he walks over and with one hand he's carrying this tray with the four um, ales on it and he sets it down on the table and he says uh i'd offer you food but we don't have a cook and our kitchen is not working now and we don't have a fire so and there's no rooms available I Can say, I, uh, I say thank you in Dwarvish, and I, I take everything off the tray and I pass it around. Okay. Are so, we about ten feet from the from the fireplace? No, it's across okay. the room, so it's, okay, it's about okay. forty feet away. Okay, okay. 
It's, it's a big, wide open Careful. room, and and you guys feel like you, in any normal situation, this 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 tavern would probably have like sixty or eighty people in it, and there there are literally like twelve people, including you guys. Um, you do notice that there's a set of stairs that seem to go up to the second floor. And he's giving us the beers. Yeah, he gives you the beers. I, I, I just I just mutter to him. I know there are others of my kind. I need to speak with them. He he looks at you suspiciously. But may make a um <laughs> Make a deception check. Okay, thirteen. He's he's yeah, you know, like he kind of looks at you suspiciously, and then he looks at like the rest of your group, and he says, um, "You'll have to wait a little bit. I don't have anybody else here right now." Don't worry, we have the a whole night. He says, "All right, I'll be back." Uh, Bill. Yeah. Um, I rolled an insight check after he said there's no rooms available. And rolled a 17. Um, yeah, so you feel like what he's saying is maybe not entirely true. Um, not like not like a straight up lie though like not like there are rooms available but there's like something about the rooms and their availability that seems to be a little sketchy to you in terms of how he was handling that um he he walks back over to the bar bar climbs up his step ladder and he's now kind of sitting back there with the guys at the bar um you guys each have a mug of ale. So, Harley, do you see the two guys that you recognize? I'm being very quiet. You see do not. Guys? Yeah, you, you you don't see them in here. They are, they are not here. They should be probably elsewhere or maybe upstairs. Yeah, well... Maybe they are also ill and the rooms that are here... Maybe they are like a I don't make, know. Make, makeshift hospital. I don't know. No. I, trust, drink I beer. trust your I trust your instincts, Vishim. So if the situation goes out of the window I hope we can manage the situation. I just, have some, I have don't... bad feeling from this place. Just try not to show off too much. Jeez. You could have just walked in here, you know? Oh. You know me. Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Siler, you, out of the corner of your eye, you see uh, the dwarf lean into one of the three guys sitting at the bar and mutter something, and the guy kind of gets up casually and walks over to the stairs and goes up. I give uh, Harley a small kick under the table, and when he uh, uh, looks over, and I just nod my head, like over there. Okay. That's the question. Do I have uh, do I have murmur uh, with me? Sure. So I'll try to perceive through his uh, vision who's that and uh, what's going on. Maybe you, I'll send you him. Would like to send him to follow yeah. that guy? Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll send him. So you see that uh, the guy basically goes up to the second floor and walks down a long hallway. Um, and there are doors 
four doors on either side. So it looks like there's eight small rooms that would normally be available in this inn. All of those doors are closed. He walks past all of those to another set of stairs and he walks up those stairs and you see that when he gets to the top, he's in another room. Uh, and this room looks like it's a very open uh, kind of meeting room. You notice that there's even like a small bar with a, a cask of ale and some wine on a shelf and a few tables. And there's a door leading outside from this room. Uh, he walks out that door and he walks across the deck of the roof and he's walking towards the other side of the third floor. And that is where you see um, he approaches a human um, and he, he walks up to the human and he says, uh, there's a group of people that have come in. One of them looks like maybe they're half drowned. They asked about speaking with one of their kind, something like that. I don't know. Um, what should we do? And, and the human says, stay here. I'll go ask. And you see he pulls out a key and opens the door to the other room and goes inside. Um, can murmur pass through walls? Oh, I'm not sure. Maybe he can teleport, but I'm uh, not so familiar. Otherwise, I'm going to oh, have you make no. a roll for murmur. Uh, yep, he's unable. Okay, so if you want, it's it's up to you. You would have to make this decision, though. If you want to try to send Murmur through the door before the guy closes it, you could you could do that and just make a uh, acrobatics check, basically, like a for for Murmur. Okay, I'll probably try not to risk it, and uh, maybe I'll uh, let Murmur just to place his ear on the window if there is any and try to listen. Okay. Uh, I will let you make a murmur perception check. Okay. Uh, 18 and his modifier is <laughs> perception. Plus one, 19. Um, so you hear the voice of the man. He is speaking in Undercommon, and basically he summarizes that there's a group of people downstairs in the inn um, who, who are asking about uh, meeting up with a drow, because there's a half drow that was asking about meeting up with a drow. Um, and that, um, they, they aren't any of the regulars, um, and that they don't seem to have any of the symptoms. To which you hear a voice respond, also in undercommon, and it is a female voice that says, Get them out of the inn, unless they're one of our people. I don't want anyone else in the inn. It's too risky. They might already have the plague. Um, and you hear the man in Undercommon respond, yes, my lady, I'll deal with it. As uh, the murmur is listening uh, and they stop speaking, uh, I'll try to take a look at the people inside if it's not too dark. And murmur has dark vision. So 
Murmur, wait, say that again. What's Murmur trying to do? Well, um, as they stop talking, yeah, I'll just uh, look through his eyes to uh, see uh, who's speaking to whom. And if I can uh, take a glance of the uh, female growl. Well, so Murmur didn't if Murmur didn't go inside the room, then the only chance you would have to see is afterwards when the man is leaving. Yeah, okay. Uh, I, I'm going to say you still have to make a perception check because okay. not only is it dark, but just the way that the door opens, you wouldn't actually see where she is. Uh, yep, it's just 11. Okay, so, so Murmur kind of tries to move and see but without going into the room while the door's open, you can't see at that angle where she was. <sighs> okay, guys. We are in a bit of a pickle here. They are trying to take us out of the inn. So... Oh, good. Let's just leave. Well, let me handle that. i try something. Hey, this is pretty. I'm gonna speak up a little. Off. This place is really boring. Mm -hmm. Our friends back in town said this is a really hopping place. Look at this no music, no nothing, no food. Why are we even here? And I'm keeping the act because we need to speak with her. Um, make a uh, let's see. Siler and Angler make insight checks. Yeah, that's five. Sixteen, not bad. You notice, like, when, when, when Ushun starts, like, speaking up about this and complaining, you, you notice that, like, the, the dwarf, like, shoots a glance over at your table, and then, and then he steps down from his his stool and walks over to the table and he says uh, that'll be 10 silver pieces for your ales total we're closing up now it's it's dead so you need to pay up say it's dead I'll uh, plop I'll down I'll, I'll plop there. down a a gold piece and stand up. I'm getting out of here anyway. He takes the gold. He says, thanks. Good night. He walks hey, I want my door. change back. He says, well, obviously, because you're a dumb half work, you don't realize that a gold is worth what your ale was. So he puts it in his shirt. He says, you could get your change back outside. He goes, the rest of you clowns, get out of my bar. We're closing. Did you call me dumb? He said, he looks over his shoulder and he said, yes, I called you dumb. Now you and your clown friends get out of the bar. You called them clowns? I don't care about that, but you I'll, called me dumb. I'll put my hand on Ushun's no! arm. He called me dumb. I want my 10 silver back. He, he says, uh, let me see if I have changed. Hold on one minute. And he walks over to the bar. I'm, I'm following him. You see that uh, all the rest of the people that were at the tables, they like get up and finish up their, their mugs and they walk out. And you see the two guys that are left at the bar, when you follow him over, they're like, uh, time to go. And they get up and they leave. I just keep sitting quietly. The dwarf goes up onto his step stool and you see he goes over to a wooden box that's just tucked underneath the bar, pulls it out on top of the bar and he flips it open. And you see that there's, um, I'll roll randomly. There are six silver pieces in there. And he says, uh, here, here you go. And he dumps the six silver onto the, the bar for you. Okay, and I take a, one of my big claws and I count them. <laughs> says one, two, three, four, five, six. That's six. That's all I got. Look, he holds up the box. 
He goes, what are you going to do? Beat me up? You big, dumb half-orc? He goes, I'm not even carrying weapons. I'll call the constables and I'll get out of the bar. I'll just stare at him. And then I'll, I'll pick up I'll pick up the six and I'll I'll turn away. Let's get out of here. As as you're turning back, you see two people coming down the stairs. One of them was the original guy that was sent up the stairs, and the other is like a broad shouldered human man who's looks like he's probably in his forties. Um and he neither one of them have weapons that you could see visibly. Um, the broad-shouldered human guy taps the the other guy on the shoulder and says, uh, you, you better head out. And he nods and he leaves. And the broad-shouldered human guy walks over to the dwarf. And you hear him in dwarvish say, is that the group of people? And the dwarf says, yeah, I was just kicking them out. And then he, he looks back and, and in dwarvish he says, uh, I, I talked to the lady. She said it would be best if they weren't here. I'll, I'll, I'll excuse them. And the dwarf says, "Watch out for the half orc." And he nods. The broad-shouldered human man comes over to you guys as you're finishing up your beers, and he says, uh, "He looks at the table, and and he looks at Harley, and he says, were you the one that was?'" asking to speak with someone of your kin? I have traveled far enough from the Underdark just so that I will learn more about the situation here. Uh, make a deception. <sighs> okay. I'm standing up by the table <laughs> okay. watching this guy. Okay. Uh, 15. He says, um, well, I'm sorry you traveled that far. I, I don't think there's anyone here that would be able to help me. The lady knows that the plague is spreading. And she fears that we might have, might have it already. Isn't she? He says... Yes. Uh, judging by the look of you, none of you are showing any symptoms, though. Why are you so curious about this? Do you know how to cure it? Do you know what's caused it? Well, yeah, what, what already we, infected animals. What if we know? And we are trying to um, assure that no more uh, uh, no more uh, diseased people is uh, uh, spreading it anymore and we may know the cause of it but we're trying to figure out who's behind that he says You're not with the constables. You're not with. Them. No, trust me. You're, you're you're not part of the council. No. I traveled. But you know about the plague. Yeah. You know that no one's been able to cure it so far. Yeah. And I'm. Uh... Thing in the lady, common. the lady would be interested in speaking to you if you knew how to cure it, or who's behind it. Well, exactly. That's why I need to talk to the lady. I need. She I doesn't need... want to talk to you. You can tell me. Okay. And I'm speaking in undercommon. Yeah, he he switches to undercommon. Yeah. And he speaks it relatively fluently. Tell her. And he says, uh, just to be clear. Okay. You aren't from here, right? You're not from Melbourne. Not at all. I don't understand. 
And then he switches to common and he says, you're not from Melbourne, right? No. But you know who's behind the plague? Well, we're on the we're on the trail to figure out who's behind that. We just need, let's say, support. We may need a bit more informant throughout the city and throughout uh, other cities like like uh, Sentia and Plan. What do you say? Will you uh, tell this to the lady? How much do you know about the disease and how it's spread? It's spreading throughout the diseased animals. Those animals yes. are... The animals are carriers. And those animals are not here because of some natural reason. They are shipped all over the moon sea area. Mm -hmm. They are shipped on uncharted ships. One of such ships was quarantined in Flan, and uh, my informants told me that load of those uh, diseased animals were unloaded here about a fortnight ago. Few people from Rockin' Dread were um, tasked to let them loose on the road. And they returned already. I just need them to be found. I know how they look. I know who they are. But I have not enough means to approach them and squeeze the information out of them. That's why I tried to speak with the lady. Will you tell her that Arlie the fox was here? Arlie. How do you know fox. about the trade? How do you know about the trade overland? Well, I have my information, uh, informant, like so, here, my, like here, my friend, and I'll uh, carry the murmur as she's, as uh, he's turning visible on my shoulder. I was spying on them, and that's why I know. He says you. The, the group of you, have you seen the plague in other places other than Melbourne? Yep. And you, have you seen it affect people? Or only animals? Well, we saw it affect a troll. Ogre? What was that, Siler? Um, I think it was an ogre. That we took care of. <clears throat> it has been spread through animals and other beasts, but now it is being seen somehow to to be able to infect humanoids. Yes, and I think that somebody meddled with the plague to be able to do that. And you, do you know how it is spread? By bite. The ogre tried to bite me. Didn't get, didn't even get close. Well, we took care of that one. Wait here. He turns and he goes back up the stairs. And about 10 minutes later, 
he comes down the stairs and he says, The lady has told me to ask you if you could look at our men. Two of our men returned from a caravan. of transporting those animals. They are now starting to show symptoms of the sickness. So those two. We, the lady would like to know if our men are appearing in the same way and showing symptoms like the ogre that you said you encountered that was infected. I look at Harley and I say, I'll do it. Siler? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I remember how terrible he looked. Very well. Come. And you see he walks over to behind the bar he pushes this curtain aside and he walks into another room where you you see now that there's like a kitchen back there. And nothing's, there's cupboards that have food and shelves that have supplies, but nothing in the kitchen is operating. Um, he walks to the back of the kitchen and opens another door again with another key and swings the door open. Uh, and he reaches over and he grabs a lantern and he adjusts the lantern um, and aims this bullseye lantern down the stairs, and he starts walking down the stairs into the cellar. Are they in cages? Well, you're not down there yet. No, I ask him. Are oh. they in cages? He says no, but they're they're each one of them is tied. Uh, uh, each one of them is on a uh, on a bed uh, in their own room, and the doors are locked. Why, okay. why cages? Why would they need to be in cages? They become enraged, shall we say, in a very unnatural way. Oh, really? Well, he gets to the bottom of the stairs and you notice there's a big open room, which has like kind of all the things that you'd expect in the cellar of an inn. There are multiple barrels of and, and casks of different ales and beers, um, bottles of wine, food preserves, all that kind of stuff, uh, additional mugs and plates and, and sort of supplies. You also see about 10 different crates of different shapes. Uh, some of those crates have um, like markings from ports of departure, like painted on them, you know, like from, from different ports uh, you see like Elmwood, Holberg, Molemaster, Ulash, Flan. Um, and then he kind of just casually walks past that to a little short hallway. And in this short hallway, there are four doorways. And he goes open to the first one and he unlocks the, the lock and he opens up the door and kind of holds his lantern in there. And you hear a weak voice say like, Sir, please, could you could you please just bring me more water? I'm so thirsty. Sure. And and he says, yes, one moment, friend. And he says, uh, the first man is in here. And he opens the door, and you see he goes over to a small pitcher and pours some water into a mug. And he goes in and he hands it to the man. And you see one of the two guys that were on the caravan that you guys uh that murmur had followed uh he is on a small cot covered in in sweat and just looks like very like like pale and sickly there's a bucket next to the bed uh where there's obviously like vomit um and and he just looks very weak and sickly and he he takes the water and he's kind of shaking and he, he drinks some of the water and he kind of leans back in the bed and, and, and he looks up at you guys as you're standing in the doorway and he says, are, are you healers? Have you come to help me? 
Were you bitten by one of the animals that you took out earlier? Uh, I I don't think so. Did we see any bite marks on his arm or something? Uh, yeah. If if you if anyone would like to examine him, you could you could do that. You can roll medicine. Um, if you don't have, well, I would say the, the most likely thing would be to roll medicine if you're going to examine him. But based on what you see, he, he's wearing a shirt that is soaking wet from sweat. His arms are exposed and, and he kind of holds up his arms and shows you both sides. And, and as he lifts up his head, you don't see anything on his, basically on, on the front of him, but you can't really see his legs or his feet or his back because he's in a bed and he's got a, a blanket on. Mm-hmm. Did you, um, go ahead, Simon. Yeah, I was gonna say, um, could you just stand, try and sit up and take your shirt off so we can see better? I don't want to get too close just now. Kind of, He kind of like turns and, and weakly, it takes them about like three minutes just to sit up in the bed. And then you you see he you kind of like uh, and he slowly takes his shirt off. Um, oh, so you don't need to take it off; just lift it up. That's plenty. Okay. Turn around so we can see your back. He turns. Um, no marks. Make either a medicine or perception check. Going for perception. Yeah. That's a 21 on perception. I'll put 13. my hand on the I'll put my hand on Angus' shoulder and what do you think, doctor? <laughs> I'll just point to Siler because I didn't know full well. Um I didn't see anything. So you who you had a successful perception check, right? Yeah, 21. Okay. As he's lifting the shirt up, just just like where his neck meets his shoulder, you see a red mark. Um, without a medicine check, though, you don't really know what that is. Yeah. If you make a successful medicine check, you could maybe identify what that mark is. Yeah, I was going to say being a um, wood elf ranger might be able to spot what kind of animal bite it might be. Yeah. Can I roll a nature check and see if it's a bite? Um, Probably not. A nature check would identify like if it was like a poison ivy or like a okay. reaction to something. A medicine. I'll try check. to. Uh, no, medicine check. I. Yeah, I filled my medicine medicine check at a five. So you you aren't sure. You aren't sure if it's uh, a bite mark or if it's like um, bruising or if it's like a, a an infected kind of you know postule like a pimple or something like a pimple or like a pox you know like mm-hmm. how poxes break out into so but you do see one red mark mm-hmm. um and, and 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 upon your completion of that he, he kind of like lays back down in the bed and, and pulls the blanket up over him and he says so what what can you do he's like i feel so weak uh, one moment i'm freezing and then the next time I'm, I'm hot Mm-hmm. Well, um, I'll ask the uh, bar, uh, barman if you can r- rustle up some uh, chicken soup for you. It, that will do you good. He he just nods. Um, the let me see. You didn't eat any. Uh meat from those animals did you he says no no okay how did they seem were they uh were they agitated and angry looking and wanting to get at you and stuff like that yes Yes, Uh they they were it was like they were rabid They, they wouldn't stop making noises and scratching at the cages and we didn't even make it all the way to Fenchia. We just stopped in the on the route and, and dragged those cases 
out into the, the fields and left. All right. So you left him on the side of the road or you, did you let him loose? He said, well, we let him loose. I, I felt bad. I didn't want him to just starve to death in a crate. So I figured, you know, and let them loose and that way they they could just go back to nature where they belonged yeah yeah um, for, for the greater good always for the greater good yes yeah. Your, you humans are always acting on greater good mm -hmm. and if those diseased animals would kill hundreds, thousands, or probably even more travelers. I don't understand what you mean. I... It's a plot, and you hey, were hey, a hey, soldier hey. in that plot. Hey, hey, Harley, look, this man is sick. Don't upset him anymore. But I'm going to tell you, sir. Yeah, I take yeah. a deep breath. And... I'm going to tell you, sir, that this will probably get worse for you before it gets better. He says, well, that's not good news. But now you know. We will do what we can. Or you can choose the merciful death for the greater good. He's like, you scare me. Get him away from me. Away from yeah, me. yeah. <laughs> Don't listen to him. Anyway, you take care. He and just I'm... rolls rolls over and kind of drifts off to sleep, muttering. Okay, I walk out the door. I let the guy lock it. And, so uh, the the guy says. Uh, He says, like once once the door is closed, he, he looks at you guys and he says, so it doesn't look very good for him. He's obviously is sick, but- he Is the other one like this? Well, yeah, they, they pretty much look, well, here. He walks down and he opens the door and he holds his lantern up and, and he looks in and he's like, hey, hey, are you awake? And you hear like a groan and he says, come on in. And you see the other guy looks about the same, um, again, covered in sweat, but he's, his face is kind of like, he's on his side facing away from you. Uh, the man holds up the lantern. Um, I'm gonna uh, pour him a cup of milk, uh, uh, water. Go up to him and careful. Uh, yeah, um, sir. I'm 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 here to check you out and look you over. Um, could you? Oh, careful. He turns over to you and and you see that he's also like his hair is soaking wet in sweat and his face is kind of like has that greasy sweaty look and his shirt's wet and, and he he looks feverish and weak. But you also notice that like he's um. He has like kind of a, a yellow discharge in his eyes, like like uh, like an eye infection almost, and it's it's kind of crusty. And he he kind of squints and he he like he wipes the back of his hand across his eye and he opens up one of his eyes, and his eyes is like totally like pink and and bloodshot and looks infected. And and he he looks up and he's like, "Can you help me, uh, please?" No, I'm gonna try. I need so to so much. I need to check you out a little bit first. All right. So could you, li could you lift up your shirt for me? Just lift it up. You don't he, need to take he it off. Cries. He's like, I, I can't. I'm too weak. <sighs> I motion for the um, the dwarf to come over and um, could you help him out lifting up a shirt? So the dwarf's not down there, but the the man. Oh, yeah. that you guys have been following he he says okay and he reaches forward and kind of 
helps the guy up and and lifts up his shirt. Right. I'm checking him front and back. Um, you guys can make perception checks if you want. Yep. Yeah. Thirteen. Thanks. <laughs> um, so you don't find anything on his back, but when the when the man sits the sick man up, you see that on his <clears throat> on his leg on the back of his leg. Uh, like kind of on his calf, you see a, a red mark. All right. Were you bitten by any of the animals that you dropped off on the road? He says, I don't think so. There were, there were a lot of mosquitoes and stuff off, off the road. When, when we dragged the crates over there and it's kind of swampy when you're close to the thar and a lot of mosquitoes do you remember where you got that mark on your calf what mark there's a there's a mark on your calf that's looking rather infected do you know how long that may have been he kind of looks down and he, he says i can't see down there and he he tries to wipe the crusty yellow stuff from his eyes i'll take um i'll take the uh the end of my um halberd i'll just say stand still and i uh i tap the end of my halberd near the mark it's right there He says, I, I don't remember. Hmm. All right. All right. Seen enough here. Yeah. But those mosquitoes may be another factor of spreading the disease. Probably. Okay. Let's leave. Yep. That's not good. Yep. Okay, um, uh, let's go upstairs. Mm -hmm. um, so, so he closes the door and then gets you guys get back up to the upstairs, and it's basically just you guys and the human man. And he says, he, he says, look, uh, I'm going to tell you something, and I have the expectation that you will keep it in confidence. I if I am betrayed or if the lady is betrayed uh, there will be consequences we operate a small guild um, it, it was a, a petty gang uh, of, of just thieves and cutthroats uh, highwaymen who were more or less unorganized called the skinned rats we we came two years ago and kind of cleaned up the act and in time we were able to to buy and renovate this place now the lady doesn't like a lot of attention but being that Melvon's kind of in a halfway position between a lot of different places um, business can be really good if you are interested in smuggling and illegal goods, protection, that sort of thing. Um, this plague is very bad for business. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Now, well, uh, you, know. you don't know who started it, but obviously it's getting bad because it's not just animals anymore. Uh, fortunately, these two guys are the only one of our gang that seem to have these symptoms but this is not a good thing for business yeah um do you know who gave the orders to pick up these animals from the ship and bring them out uh, into the uh, uh, countryside and other places up towards um uh, uh, what was the team uh Thania? Up the ladder, no. All right. 
we don't know who's responsible for all of this, but we know some things. We know that we weren't the only guild that was contracted to bring goods from one place to another. Um, we know that even legitimate companies were involved in this. Some of the legitimate trade companies in the Moon Sea, uh, the Red Plumes, mercenary company escorted a few of those um i even heard that across the moon sea that there were um ships full of this cargo coming into uh port cities like elmwood and mole master uh and Ulash. no one's really sure who's behind this or why but it is bad for business. If people can't travel, if trade can't go through, plagues are just not good. Yeah. Now, Let me tell you about your gentleman here. Okay. The one who kept wiping his eyes is further along in the disease than the other one. The ogre we saw also had the eyes like that and be, was frenzied and wanted to attack, acted rabid. So two things to think about. These guys are going to get worse. They're going to start attacking other people, possibly spreading the illness. So you can, um, if there is a trusted magical healer who wants to study them, I would say get in, in touch with them. Otherwise, you'll have to keep them in cages, keep them locked up, starve them, or kill them outright, because they aren't going to get better. I'll just uh, take a step in front of the Ushun, and I'll speak directly to the men. Our kind is not known for its uh, trustworthiness, but uh, here in the foreign land, we have to help each other as much as we can. Here is the token of our friendship to the lady, and I'll give him my small red gem that is worth 50 gold. We will try to find a cure for your men. It won't be easy, but here in the city, there is alchemist, herbalist. I think you know her. Give her protection and we will find what you need for curing disease of your men. But we need a few more information from you. If you can find that, we will need to know where those grapes are coming from. Please tell this to the lady and we will be on our way. I'll make you a deal on behalf of the lady. If you can find a means of either a person who is able to cure disease or acquire the necessary items that the, the apothecary in town needs to make those potions, you will have earned our friendship and moreover 
our support. Whether that support is information or assistance in other ways. We have a deal then. He nods and he reaches out his hand and he says, I am Rakul. I am Arlie. Arlie the fox. And I'll spread her to a handshake him. <laughs> and he, he looks at all of you and he says, Well then, I suppose time is of the essence. We will be here doing what we need to do to find out more information about this. And he nods. Okay. And I think we'll be going off then. Mm-hmm. <sighs> okay. So, I mean, it, it's evening. So do you guys want to try to go north out of the city where Ushun had found stuff out, or do you want to wait until the next day? I'd say head back to the inn, um, get ready for the morning. Yeah. As, okay. we are go as we're going to the inn, I'm talking to the whole group. Ushun, you know where those herb collectors went. Silas, yeah. you, you are the great tracker and mm -hmm. angler you are sneaky boy we will need all those abilities just to survive and please any bites and we are screwed yeah and i'll pray the rest of the way to the raven queen to give us strength um so you guys go to the inn. Do you, I mean, do you do anything in particular or do you, are you just gonna go to your rooms and get some sleep? I'm gonna uh, remember all the lore I can about how we orcs kept ourselves from getting bitten by bugs. Basically we smeared ourselves with mud, right? Um, yeah, not just any mud, though, because a lot of the mud in the Shar was very, uh, like, bacterial in nature. Yeah. Um, so it, you had to kind of find, like, more of a, a softer clay and water it down to make sort of a paste. And that's yeah. how a lot of the, the orcs in the Shar would keep from getting bit up. Okay, I'm going to head out early and uh, see if I can find a, a potter who has some of this clay. Okay. Um, so I'm going to assume that if you guys don't specify anything, you're just going to take the long rest and that the next morning, you guys are off at, you know, six in the morning or whatever. Um, the innkeeper at your inn, uh, when you guys go downstairs, uh, he does have um, some eggs and he has some some oatmeal a lot of oatmeal but you notice that he doesn't have any fresh fruit or vegetables or any meat mm -hmm. um but he provides you with that breakfast uh there are a few other people that are staying in that inn and you guys have seen them you know in the last couple weeks um some of them have stayed in the inn since you guys arrived and some people kind of went you know came and went um but as you guys go down for your breakfast in the morning it's literally just you guys and the innkeeper yep. uh the innkeeper is is kind of moving about quickly he brings out all the stuff for you guys and then he he wishes you a good day yep. <clears throat> okay um, um ocean where are we heading uh we need to go to a uh, potter shop we need to get this clay uh we used to rub ourselves with this uh watered down clay to uh keep the bugs off us so 
You go oh, to the potter's a- shop. The potter's shop is completely closed up. Shutters and doors. Around the back. You go around the back and you actually see a pit where it looks like maybe the potter digs and stores uh, clay. Uh, and you, you see in that pit, there's a su- more than sufficient quantity of clay. Huh. Um, you just would need to add water to it and, and kind of work it through in order to make it into a uh, feasible paste. Okay, well, I've got an extra sack. I'll just stuff some in a sack okay. and uh, I'll slip a gold piece under his door in the back there. Um, okay. Okay. I've, I've Anyone have that. a cook pot or anything? Oh, wait. <laughs> I can do it. All right. I'm talking to Angler. Well, you'll, you'll be washing that out of your feathers for a week. I'm going to write on my board. I was just thinking that. <laughs> um, yeah, you, you probably, Angler, would not need to do this because yeah. the density of your feathers protects you from a lot of pesky insects. So um, amongst the rest of you, so like you guys basically are in the north side of town already. Do you want to go out? The north gate and, and head out of town yeah let's go out the north gate um and before okay. we get before we get to the wildlands let's apply this clay all right mm-hmm. uh you have water any skin you have water skins i'm assuming yeah okay, any so- skin even under your clothes get in those sensitive areas if you know what i mean and uh right. yeah so you, you guys take maybe, I don't know, a half an hour to to kind of mix this up and, and apply it all over. And you've got this this thick coating of of this paste all over you guys. And I'll uh you know, I'll I'll ask them to help help each other out, you know, make sure that everyone is covered. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, as as we're doing that, I'll uh put my uh, noble clothes in the uh, backpack and uh, I'll put on my traveler clothes but I'll still put on my muddy hat the tricorn hat okay just to, just to be sure <clears throat> and I'm looking at the angler <laughs> um <sighs> So you guys basically do all this stuff. Uh, it's it's still morning. Um, the road is empty. Like for the last half an hour while you've been doing this stuff, you have not seen a single person go by. Um, so you are in the open land just north of Melbont. Um, and a few miles away is the Thar. So where are you going and what are you doing? Well, she said it's the verge of a wild prairie north of the city. So that's what we're looking for. Ocean and Siler lead the way. Um, are you leading the way in what fashion? Are we're going first. Or... Yeah, okay, so you just start walking randomly? Um. I don't know. I don't do much tracking. Well, so here's the scoop. You know, you know that there were people going out to collect different ingredients in this area. So you Four could try to ago. track people's footprints. Um, or if you are proficient in nature, you could actually make a successful nature check first to see if you can identify the ingredients uh, in nature that they would have been looking for and try to track them through that. Well, that's what I was counting on with Tyler. All right, yeah, Tyler, more, what are you uh, gonna do? Nature or survival or which one first? I'm more of a woodland kind of specialist. Um, so this open terrain is a little bit dif- more difficult for me, but um, I'll try a medicine check. Yeah, net one. Well, I don't know about the herbs, so I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a survival check, and I got a thirteen. 
I'm also so proficient in survival. Okay, make that roll. Six. Oof. So, you guys walk around for two hours. You do okay. find some tracks here and there, uh, but you are not sure if how old these tracks are, and they don't lead you to anything. Or okay. Anything. Now I'm going to make a nature check. Okay. Ooh, 21. All right. Um, that is very strong. So I'm going to say that you... Um, I'm going to say that you're aware of five of the seven ingredients for a potion that would be involved in curing disease. Now, you know, however, that many potions, um, not many potions, but like, you know that, that, uh, how do I put this? You know that there are variations on any potion recipe, okay? So like sometimes a, um, sometimes a potion recipe is not just the same seven ingredients for one disease as it is for another, okay? So you know at least the majority of the ingredients that would be commonly used in these sorts of potions. Okay, I describe these to the uh, others as best I can and okay. about what shape they'd be in this time of year. And where to find them and what the leaves yeah, look they, like. Yeah, they gotta be around here somewhere. Okay, so, so with that then, there's no to do. Anybody who is searching can make a survival check. If you have proficiency in survival, you make that with advantage. If you don't have proficiency in survival, you could just make a great survival check. Mm, ben. And the number of successes will determine your overall group success. 21 total for survival. 21, Matt? 19 plus 2. Nice. No. I have 10. I have 11. 13. Okay, so um, I'm going to say that you, while you guys are out, and again, this is another hour of time as you're traipsing around, um, you know, looking for either the people who are gathering these herbs or for the herbs themselves, you are able to find um, three of the types of things that are needed for this potion. Now, um, Matt, I'm gonna have you roll 2d6. What am I sneak attacking? Two sixes. Uh, that's pretty awesome. So um, you find um, 12 of the... Um, Herb number one. No, I have a, it's a specific oh. one. 12 of the orange turmeric um, roots. Here, put them in this sack. We'll put them in the sack. I always have several sacks on me. Um, all right. Who who else rolled over a ten? What you eleven. Eleven. You roll one d four for me. Uh, you find two of the um, primrose plants. Right. I'll hand them over to, to Ushun and put them in, the, uh, in her back. Okay, Ushun, what do you have? What was your roll? 13. 13, roll a one, uh, roll, so a d4, and add one to the result. Five. 
you find uh, five of the um, red lavender herb. And um, by the way, since we're not herb pickers, we're just pulling these up and not conserving the place where they are. Yeah. So, um, okay. Uh, so we got this. We haven't found the people. Uh, uh, is it about noon? It's about noon. Make a perception check. Anyone with, um, actually, I guess it would be a survival check. Make a survival check if you have proficiency in it. If you don't, then rip. Come on. Net one again. Seven. Net 20. Um, Angler, as your group is kind of finished gathering these herbs and the sun is overhead and the heat from the swamp is kind of, you know, the swamp smells are starting to bake out and, and permeate the air around you. You smell something a bit more foul coming off the wind to the east of where you guys are. And you see that there's like clumps of trees um, and then some hills, but you smell something very foul from the east. I'm gonna tap uh, Harley and write that on the board. Smell something. <laughs> Smells like Siler might have farted. <laughs> well, that's interesting. To the east. And what do you think? Diseased animals or a corpse of the earth picker? Um, the smell gets more pronounced to the point where all of you can smell it. Make a perception check. Oh, that's nine and so nineteen. Okay, you see, you see movement in the trees about one hundred and fifty feet away. Okay, I'm ready to. Yeah, I'm readying. What are, what are you, tell me what you're readying. Oh, a short oh. bow. I'll I'll ready my. Uh, Eldritch Blast. <clears throat> I'll uh, put an arrow to my bow. Show yourself. Common. Um, you you don't you don't hear anything in response, and the trees <laughs> the trees stop moving. It's right over there. Are there any rocks? Uh, yeah. Okay. I'll pick up a rock and I'll toss it in that direction. I'll send Murmur there and I hope that Ushun won't hit him with the stone. Um, roll, roll me an attack roll just for giggles. Is this a range attack? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's real good. <laughs> Five. Didn't even make it there. <laughs> okay. Uh, you said you're, um, Harley, you're going to send Murmur over there? Yep. Invisible. Okay. Um, when, when you, when you get there, when he gets there, sorry, um, he, he kind of moves through the trees and he sees two large, and when I say like large, I mean bigger than Ushun looking orcs, um, they look like orcs, but they look much, much bigger and bulkier. Almost like if you crossed an ogre with an orc. 
Well, guys, and they are not, they're not wearing armor. Uh, they have like simple, like furs kind of covering them. They look very primitive and they have kind of like stone technology weapons, like, you know, stone axes and like stone sp- uh, tip spears. We may have a problem. Why? Ushun, just tell me once more. How, uh, how those uh, creatures you, uh, you saw, how they looked like? And I'm... What, com- the ogre? I, the diseased uh, orcs, ogres, I don't know what was that. Well, and I'm, they com- had, uh... and I'm comparing that uh, with the look of those two. Half orcs, half ogres. Well, they had crusty stuff in their eyes, like that guy in the basement. And they looked like they were frenzied. They didn't have any real t- tactics or anything. You know, they just ran at us. So these what are you two, saying? These two do not look like that. They they look like they're clearly hiding in these in this grove of, of trees uh, and watching you and their eyes don't seem to be um, infected or crusty or red. Okay. What? Why are you asking me this? Is there something over there? Yep. Two big bulky guys that are watching us. So they're humans. Half orcs, half ogres maybe. Hmm. They are pretty interested in us. Hmm. Okay, well, I'll put my um, halberd in a rest position, non-threateningly, okay. and I'll take uh, about six steps forward toward where I think they are, and I'll speak to them in Orcish, mm-hmm. saying, uh, We are looking for our companions. We have no cause to harm you. We will not harm you as long as you do not harm us. Please let us converse. Um, one of them steps out and you see, like I said, it's, it's kind of like if you mixed an ogre with an orc, uh, huge lower teeth, like that come up to like almost their cheekbones, mm-hmm. huge, you know, lower things. They bigger uh, than me. <laughs> yeah. This dude, wow. this dude's about 10 feet. He's, he's considered a large creature. So. He kind of comes out like on all fours almost, like he kind of hops out with with a spear in, in one hand. And then he, he, he kind of stands up and he looks out at you and in, in orc he says, your people come from the city and he points south. Yes. He says, There were some a uh, week ago. They have been attacked. By what? By the dogs. Sick dogs? Yes. You know them? And you? And you? Are you no. well? We are not sick. Good. More and more beasts in the Thar sick now. I'll turn to Angler. What 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 does he what does he say? What what is he saying? Just Where shrug. are these people? People that came. Where are their town. remains? Where are the remains of the ones attacked by dogs? He points. A little bit deeper into the thar and he says uh, 
go that way over those hills and that thicket. He says, I, I don't think they live. I think they were attacked and eaten by dogs, sick dogs. Mm. He will. He turns and he goes. And I just go like, I, I, I do the, the, the orc greeting. I say, Ushun. He stands up and he says, Goro. And then he sits down and he hits his chest and he kind of jumps and, and scuttles back into the woods and pushes the trees aside. Okay, I know where their bodies are. They were attacked by uh, sick dogs. Um, you guys head over in the direction where he's yeah. pointed. Mm -hmm. So you you walk for like three hundred meters, and you you come over uh, kind of like a low hill, and then past this thicket of kind of dense undergrowth and a few trees that are scraggly and there's some damp bog areas um, not quite full swamp but just damp mucky areas and you come around and you see a site of uh, carnage you see body parts um, of people who look like they've been torn apart uh, clothing shredded body parts scattered all over this area um flies everywhere because these bodies have been baking in the sun in a swamp for days now um you do see a few packs amidst the the strewn stuff mm -hmm. so i'm telling you this from you're seeing this from like 30 feet away Okay. I'm perking my ears to see if I can pick up any sounds of any animals. All right, make a perception check. Seventeen. Um. You don't hear. The only thing you hear is the sounds of like swamp and insects. All right. I'm not okay, hearing I'm gonna... animals just now, but keep your keep your keep your eyes out. Yeah, gotcha. I'll go in and collect the packs. I'm not going to disturb the body parts. Okay. Unless unless it arises and attacks me, then you know. Sun dead. You, you know. go in to get the packs, and there are mosquitoes and flies all throughout the area. Yeah. Roll I'm just. A, I'm. Roll a D24. Two. Okay. And there are four packs. I just pick them up and head back to the group. Okay. I'm not even going to loot the corpses. I just leave them there. All right. You get the packs. You get back to the group. You you had quite a few flies and mosquitoes swarming around you. Um, roll me a roll me three d six. Eleven. Okay. You find uh, 11 stems of snowdrop plant. Roll me 2d6. Six. You find six whole plants of milkweed. And roll me 2d6. Six. Um, you find six pounds of uh, willow bark. Let's see one, 
two, three. Okay. All right. Uh, hey. So you are, you guys are kind of standing out there. Um, again, you know, you walked quite a ways to get there. And it just judging by what you were able to see and what Ushun saw, it looks like whoever had gone out to collect stuff had been attacked here. Um, is anyone kind of investigating the area itself, like the, the peripheral area around it? Uh, if so, make a survival check. Okay. Six. Dirty 20. Huh. Dirty 20 will do it. Um, so, Siler, you're you're kind of like, well, while Ushun was like collecting the packs and then like inventorying them, you kind of scouted out the area. And you could see now that it looks like the 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 boot prints of the people who were collecting herbs, like they had run from the south to this area, and that you see like flanking them and behind them were the paw prints of at least a dozen uh, canines. All right. So it looks like there's kind of a pack chasing them to this point. Um, and then after it, it looks like the canines went to the northwest. Also kind of in a pack. Okay. As I circle around back to the uh, to the group, um, it looks like they've been chased and attacked by uh, about a dozen do feral dogs. And it seems they've been moving off uh, as a group uh, to the northwest. Um, I oh, can't the dog. It's been a while. But... So the dogs, it sounds like the dogs were hunting them. Or they came upon them and got chased. Uh, who knows? But... Okay. Um, we could try to go back down south, follow these prints, and see where they came from. See if there's more herbs to collect. No. Um, I count the bodies. How many bodies are there? You have no idea. It's because there's body parts. You have no idea. It's been. I don't see heads. Part. No head count. Uh, <laughs> you you find a couple heads that are rotten and they're like the, to the to mm. the point where it's just the, the head and the torso is covered. Yeah, like okay. you you figure there's maybe two or three body parts, you okay. know, bodies in this area. Well, so what more do we need? Well, we're done here. We could head back to town. Well, you found three packs, and you found you're not really sure how many bodies here. Um, but Siler was able to identify the tracks from where they they came from. Mm -hmm. Excellent. I think she said she sent four. Here. She said she sent four people. That was five. Four. Doesn't matter. We should head back if we have what we were uh, coming yeah. for. We need to head back south anyway uh, to get back to town. So yeah, I'd say exactly. follow these tracks back. Yeah, okay. let's follow that trail and then head to the north gate of town. All right. So you guys follow Siler as Siler is following the trail. Uh, you again. You travel for probably a mile um, and then I'm going to have you make another survival check. 17. Everybody? Okay. Or just oh, him? Just, just Siler. Okay. You see, you basically get to a point in this hilly area. There are a lot more trees and it's less swampy as you go back south. And you see that it looks like they had like the, you, you follow the tracks and they had been looking throughout this area. Um, and you see that there are in this area a lot of little hills and outcroppings where different plants and herbs and, and flowers grow. Mm -hmm. um, and it looks like this is the area that they were originally gathering things in. All right. Um, everybody be, be quiet and perk your ears and try and if you can hear anything in the in the area uh, just take a take a moment and just listen okay um all of you can make perception checks 11 22 
Birds. Oh. You guys little, are you guys are quietly rabbits. there. You it's it sounds like just the sounds of nature, like the wind blowing through the trees. Um, anybody who got you know over a ten, um, you do see that there are a lot of different herbs and flowers and whatnot growing on these hills. Um, if you wanted to make uh, nature checks, you could try to gather more of the supplies. Yeah. Okay. Sixteen. Okay. Thirty twenty. Uh, all right. I'll go. One, I'm not mad. Yeah. I'll, I'll call it out. Just keep your numbers handy. So, Angler, you got a sixteen. Yeah. Uh, roll me up a D eight. And Ushin, you're keeping track. Five. Yeah. Uh, you found five of the purple vines. Uh, growing up along the rock, you were able to recover five purple lines. Siler, what'd you roll? Dirty 20. Okay. Uh, give me 2d6. That's a six. Uh, six total? Yep. Uh, you find six uh, mandrake roots. Ooh. Um, Harley, what'd you get? Thirty one. One? Not net, but one. Okay. I rolled two, two and I you found a dandelion. <laughs> yeah, you find lots of other things. Um Ushin, what'd you roll? Eighteen. Um, okay. Give me a 2d6. Eight. Um, you find... Eight. Sideritis. S-I-D-E-R-I-T-I-S. Eight sideritis plants. Okay. Um, and after you guys kind of like, you know, gather these useful things, um, you see that there is, um, I'll, I'll say probably Siler would notice that, that there's, there's the tracks now, like of where the group ran forward, but you notice one set of tracks going off to the east. I was wondering about Looking about yeah. that kind of thing, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> uh, folks, I think there's a, this trail prints leading off to the east. Some somebody might have split up from the party. Make a survival check. That's uh, eighteen. Okay. So you you could follow these tracks and as you're following these tracks it looks like they lead off like this person took off kind of what you surmise they're, they're heavier prints as if they weren't just walking like they were running and there are a couple where you could see like there's a wipeout like they slip fall get back up run 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 mm -hmm. uh, and it's leading towards a grove of trees about 100 meters in the distance Um, okay. Um, you notice as well that there's a paw print. There, there are a couple paw prints that seem to come from the north, and there's like a mess of prints where maybe there was a lot of movement or struggle at a certain point. And then um, you see that the paw prints move away again, and the the footprints go from like deep impressions as if they were running to walking and there's more falling and walking injured okay um well let's approach this one carefully it's been yeah. a few days i was going to say be wary and have my um quarter staff in one hand and my uh, ha other hand on my uh, hilt are you guys like walking running sneaking what's your mode of transport i'm just gonna walk. speak just walk. I was just going to walk. I, yeah. 
Stealth is difficult for me. I'll try to hide behind the angler. Just uh, great. Well, just he's trying to walking. sneak. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay, I'm trying to think of. Albert is up in at the ready. Okay, so make a perception check. <laughs> Five. Ten. You guys, uh, did anybody get over a ten? I got a nat one. I got a nat one. <laughs> I'm too. I'm too busy sneaking. All right. So you're you're following the tracks, and it's it's all of a sudden you hear like ah! You hear the yell of like a man, and you see this guy jump out of the trees and is running towards you. And he's carrying a rock in his hand. And he's running towards you at full speed. His clothes are tattered and there's blood stains on them. And you notice that his hair is like dirty and wet and matted. And his eyes are covered in like yellow kind of crusty. Uh, and his eyes are bloodshot red. I'll and he's like foaming at the mouth and he's running towards you guys. I'll instinctively shoot him with the Eldritch Block. Okay, it's gonna be initiative time, everybody. Make a roll. Ooh, 23. Oh, that's nice. 21. 21. Okay. 23. Go first. Got my short bow out. All right. He's running. Uh, He'll be at you guys this round. Uh, How far away is he? 30 feet away. 30 feet. Okay. Uh, 20 to hit. 30, 20. That's a hit. Roll damage. Uh, six, two. The arrow sinks solidly into his shoulder and he keeps running as if nothing happened. Ah, he's just screaming. Uh, who was up after Angler? Uh, uh mine was a 17. Okay, well, so you had a 21. Me and Siler, we had, I think, 21. Yeah, okay. both of 21. Siler, you have a higher dexterity? Go. Um, I draw my sword with my uh, offhand. And just um, hold my staff out. Okay. Um, you can probably walk up to him within my turn of movement and just um, whack him with my quarterstaff at, at a bit of a distance. Okay. So basically, a roundhouse uh, swoop with my uh, sure. quarterstaff to the head. Go ahead, roll. Carly, you're up on deck. Uh, That's an eight. Okay. So, uh, I'm going to say that you actually hit him, but your quarterstaff glances off of him in his running fury. Harley, you're up. Uh, Laugh. Roll. Okay, okay, okay. And I have uh, 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 six. <laughs> All right, he's running so fast and kind of like awkwardly that your blast shoots over his shoulder. Ushun, um, he's running up towards your group. I still have my okay. two, uh, two weapon fighting. Okay, roll for your offhand attack. I can use my uh, short sword offhand. That's uh, a plus four. That's fourteen. Uh, that's a hit. Roll damage. Uh, that's a d six. Eight. Okay. Uh-huh. He's still running. Ushun, you're up. Hey, I'm gonna whack him with my. Uh... Uh, Halberd, and I have a reach, so I can be. Uh, no, that will not hit. Okay. Damn it. He is going to run. Um, I'm going to ask you, Ushun, to roll a d6 for me. Sorry, d4. Run straight past Siler. Two. Um, he no. He runs up to Harley and tries to jump on Harley and grapple Harley to the ground. So this is going to be his attack roll is is to establish the grapple um, against Harley's armor class. And Don't let him bite you. 
This is a 16. What's your armor class? You're muted at the moment, Harley. Uh, 15. Okay. So he he just he jumps and and grapples you to the ground. Um, you can try to break out of the grapple with an opposed strength check. So go ahead and make a strength check. How many of us would get uh, attacks of opportunity on him? Uh, He's just flying by everybody. You next round. Well, you wouldn't because you had a, a range. Yeah, but, but 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 Siler. Siler moved in to attack him, um, mm -hmm. and Ushun is has reach. So next round, if he stays, did you did you succeed or fail? Well, I have fourteen. Okay, he has uh, twenty one. So you are currently grappled. Um, so Ushun, you can make a attack of opportunity because you're within his range, and he moved or he moved out of your range. But you have a ranged weapon, so he ran past you to attack Harley. So, okay, I rolled a sixteen. That's a hit. Roll damage. And let me see. That's a what? Ten cider, right? Yep. Um, fourteen. Fourteen damage. Yeah. Oh, he's dead. All right. You, you, as as this guy is on top of you, uh, Harley, and like like struggling with you and you're trying to push him away and he's like ah, ah, and he's trying to bite you this the edge of a of a halberd just splits his head open like a melon and he falls off of you <sighs> thank you um were you bit nope check someone checking i'm looking all over me i'll help him check Okay. Um, this I'm guy, heading over. It, it looks like this guy did not bite Harley. He doesn't seem to be scratched either, uh, but it was a close one. You notice that uh, the guy himself obviously sustained multiple bite injuries. And there's, you know, dried blood and stuff. And it looked like he tried to, like, tie off the wounds and stuff. Um, but you don't see any other equipment or stuff on him. I'm heading to that the trees where he emerged. Okay, you go over to the trees and you see uh, hanging from a limb about 12 feet in the air is a pack and uh, like a blanket. It looked like maybe at one point he was trying to like climb up the trees and, and you know, camp out there to avoid getting attacked. Meanwhile, I'm keeping an eye out to see if any animals or whatever show up from this uh, ruckus we've been making. Take the pack. Okay. Um, make me a d6 roll and then a d8 roll. d6. Two. You find two fennel plants. And the d8 was five. Uh, all right, hold on. You five, you find five, um, five of the Waneb plant, W-A-N-E-B, Waneb plant. Um, and that's, that's basically it. It looks like this guy tried to, you know, take cover from being attacked. Um, you, you know, Siler, while you're kind of keeping a lookout, you notice that even though the prints are dried up as if they're a few days old, uh, it looks like at, at some point, not the whole pack, but some of those canines returned and they were kind of circled up around the tree where this guy was, and then they eventually left. Okay. Um, well, should we guys, take the body back? Yeah. What do you What are you doing? Do you Do you leave the body? Do you take it back? What do you do? You burn it. You bury it. Uh, 
I would feel like either burning or burying. Um, but then again, we should have done, probably should have done that to the other uh, remains as well, to prevent other other animals that might be healthy from eating this poisoned, deceased little f uh, flesh. Do any of you, have any of you have the ability to find a smart person who can kind of look at this like a druid or a healer or a wizard who's interested in body parts a necromancer maybe yeah i don't know well we may ask the lady if uh, the plants we found would be sufficient the, the lady from the apo uh, apothecary no. No, I'm. I mean, the skin lady. rat. The, the drow. Re mm. Remember that Rakul Rakul introduced himself, but he never told you the name other than the lady. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I say we bury this. Put a marker here. Some yeah. sort, and uh, if anyone's interested, we have a. And we have a body that's been infected. Yeah. Does anyone have a shovel? It might. I don't know. We just, we just all use if our. You crowbar. don't have it on your in, inner uh, inventory. It doesn't exist. I know. I will say if you wanted to take two hours, you could improvise and bury this body. Yeah, I don't have a shovel. If you have crowbars, you could, you could, you know, use the crowbars to dig out dirt and rocks mm -hmm. deep enough to bury the body. Okay, let's do that. So by middle of the afternoon, let's say like 3 p.m., you guys are sweaty and covered in, well, you're already covered in dirt, most of you. Um, but you, <laughs> you basically... Are, are at a point where you have buried this this body. Okay, and uh, I don't know, I got this caltrop made of bone. I'll just stick it on there as a marker. Okay. All right. And then I'll look around, look for a tree that we can reference, gauge uh, how far from the city. Okay, yeah. Okay. So I'll back. count my steps back to the city. Okay. Um, you guys make your way back to the city by about four o'clock. You get back to the northern gates. Um, you notice that the northern gates are closed, even though it's not sundown. Uh, a bit before we get to the gate, uh, it's probably makes sense to clean ourselves up. Okay. Do you want to stop by the uh, the river? Sure. Why not? Yeah. I'll try to press the digi digitate me. You could do that very easily. You could press the digitate all of you and save yourselves time. Yep. Um, exactly. And you are now magnificently clean. You get to the northern gate and it is closed. Uh, you see, no one is in the shack outside of the gate. But there is a guard uh, on the um, on the uh, palace, the rampart, um, on the top of the wall, looking down at you guys. Open up. Mm -mm. Nope, can't do it. You got to wait. For what? Somebody's got to check you out. Okay, get them here. He says, stay, stay right there. And he goes over and he rings a bell. Ding, 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 ding. About five minutes later, you hear the, the gate open. Two guards come out with spears and they're like, don't, no, don't nobody move. And they look at you and they say, you, take that mask off. Let's see your eyes. Well, let's again take off the mask. And they look. Oh. They, they, they we left the city early they, they, this morning. 
You're still fine. All right. Y'all feeling okay? Nobody's got fevers? No. no. We haven't gotten bitten. We haven't seen it. We haven't even seen any rabbit animals. So we're still fine. Okay. Come on in, quick. And they, they open the gate. You guys go in the gate. They immediately close it. They put the deadbolt over it. Um, you walk into town and there, there's nobody out on the streets. Mm -hmm. Where would you like to go? Well, let's drop the stuff off at the apothecary. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you go not far from where you're at is Shopkeeper Row. Uh, it's on the north side of the city. And you go to the apothecary. Front door, back door? Back door. Everything's, yeah, everything's still closed. You go to the back door, you knock on the door. You see Ryanna look out the window. She looks a little bit concerned. Uh, a lock of her brown hair kind of falls in front of her eyes and she pushes it back and she says, What'd you find out there? Lots of stuff. Want to let us in? We got a lot of bags and sacks and stuff here. She says, Hold on. And she, she steps away. And about five minutes later, she comes back and she pulls the curtain aside and you see that she put a scarf around her face and she has uh, cloth gloves on, and she's got like a cloak that's buttoned up all the way to the neck. And she she says, okay, just you. She points to you, Ushin. Come on in. Okay. The rest of you wait out there. All right. And you go in, and she's got like this little back room porch, uh, and through the doorway, you could see a kitchen, and then what you assume is another door that leads into what would be her public shop. Okay, I plopped down the four packs I so, found. Wait, 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 wait. Are you sure you didn't get bit by anything? None of us were bit. Okay, put it all on that table. She points okay. to the open table. Four packs and my sack. Okay, she starts going through everything and she's like, wow, you guys found a lot. She's like, this This is great. I, I'm going to have to clean it up. And some of these things have to be simmered down and boiled boiled down a bit for their sap. And But but a lot of this stuff is going to be great. And she's like, uh, she looks up and she's like, you didn't see any of the, the people who went out picking stuff for me, did you? Where were they? Well, they were in the near field and I describe it. And three of them were chased to the north, and they didn't survive. One of them headed off to the east. Looked like that one got into a fight. It was a guy. And looked like he got away, but we, um, he, he was very ill, and we had to, um, we had to get to kill him, but we buried his body if someone wants to study it. She she begins silently kind of sobbing, like behind her mask, you know, like she kind of looks down and after a minute she's like I need time to go through all this. Come back tomorrow and check in with me. It's going to take me a few days to prepare all the ingredients in order to start making the potions, but I need well, to figure out how much is here and how much is well, usable. What what I'm saying is, I I think this body can be studied by a really smart person. If you know someone, I could uh, hear and I, I draw a little map to, to where it is and I indicate the grave and I say, and there's a, a caltrop made out of bone sitting on top of the grave. That's where the body is. If someone wants to, you know, dig it up and study it. She says, well. You know, maybe, I don't know, some physician or necromancer or some, someone I don't, would like to. I don't know anybody like that, she says, mm. but there's. 
There's a real old, powerful druid. <gasps> but they say he's kind of mad. Where is he? No one's quite sure. He he lives kind of in the lower shar between Melvant and Fenchir. They say that if you if you head straight east out of Melvant into the Shar, you might run into his grove. What kind I've of trees some, does he... I've, I've heard some people say, though, that that he's mad. I've heard other people say that that he's kind of this guardian, uh, that that he, he, sit, he makes sacrifices to the moon sea, that he that he worships Umberly and, and that he he can transform into a fish. Haven't we know. met this guy? <laughs> she says, I, I don't know, but from what I okay. know, he, he knows a lot about healing and, and I don't know if he would know more about what's going on with this, but I'll I'll work with these herbs that you brought and, and these plants and see if I could start making the extracts and start working on on some some potions. Okay, very good. She says you you'll have your split, whatever I can make out of this. You got my word on that. Tomorrow then? Yeah, come by, check in with me tomorrow. I should have a sense of how much I can make out of all this stuff. And, and then it's going to take a few days. You think that scarf over your face helps? I don't know. I'm not taking any chances. Hmm. You've seen other sicknesses, haven't you? Where people, people cough and they sneeze. And then the people that were taking care of them cough and they sneeze. Yeah, but I think this is spread by bite. Well, maybe it isn't. Maybe it isn't. I'm not taking any chance. Okay. Probably a good idea. All right. I'll leave. So she said to check in with her tomorrow. She's going to pay us in potions. So um, as Ushin kind of reveals that to you guys, um, it's you know after after squaring all that stuff away, it's starting to get to evening again. Um, where would you like to go before night falls? I want to go back to the inn. Yeah, so I, probably. Okay, yeah. to 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 your inn. Yeah. Yeah, probably best. Okay. All right, you um, guys go back to your inn. I tell you guys about the old druid who uh, makes sacrifices to the sea, and he's a powerful healer, although somewhat mad. But you know, hey, they're they live to the east. She didn't. She didn't give you a name because she no. didn't know a name. Mm -hmm. Um. So as you guys go into your hotel or your your inn, um, you notice the front door is open, or like not open, but like unlocked. Um, you go in and there's no one in the tavern. It's just quiet. Um, the innkeeper's not behind the bar. You don't hear anything in the kitchen or smell any food. Oh, good thing we have rations. It was like another okay. dry day. Well, I go behind the bar, pull out my dwarvish tankard, and see if there's anything in the tap. Yep, yeah, there is. Okay. And then I'm going to wander back into the kitchen. Okay. I'll go and All fill right. my, uh, my water jug. Okay. <laughs> Um, you guys can take whatever you want as you're there. It's nobody is there. Um, At all. Go back up to your rooms, or what do you do? 
Is there an owner's quarters on the premises? Yeah, as far as you know, the innkeeper stays in a room just off of the main foyer. Okay, I'll check that. Okay. Um, The door seems to be unlocked. Open it up. Okay, you open it up. Um, You were able to see with your dark vision. Uh, You see the innkeeper and you see that he is has a blanket wrapped around him and he's in his bed like uh like laying down on his side and, and when you open the door he looks up and he's like oh i'm sorry ma'am i i must not have heard you i was just taking a little rest here what what time is it is it time for supper i'll i'll, I'll get no I'll no, right no, there. no 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 it's, it's all right stay where you're at he, he's like well I, I i have to make make the supper um my Tell wife isn't feeling too well and and she went to her sister's farm and so i'm i'm here running the inn by myself it's okay i'll, I'll be up in just a moment no, no 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 it's all right it's all right stay where you're at stay stay right here i'll uh i'll bring you supper don't don't worry about it you're you're so kind i'm, I'm just feeling very tired and just a little just yeah. a little under the weather. I, I'll, I'll yeah. just take a, just a yeah. few moments and he, yeah. Go ahead. he lays down. I come out and I say, guys, the innkeeper is sick. The sick or just sick? Very early stages, I believe. Um, Anyone know how to cook? And that is where we will end <laughs> this episode of Moon Sea Adventures. <laughs> Wondering what kind of cookery will happen with the unqualified <laughs> chef skills of this merry band of adventurers. Um, thank you, as always, for watching. Hope you had fun. And make sure that you like and subscribe to continue following our adventures through the Moon Sea region of the Forgotten Realms. We'll see you on the next episode. Peace out, everybody. Hello and welcome to Bill Allen World. I am Wizzy the Wizard. I'm back once again to remind you to subscribe and click on the notifications button and also watch videos that are over there. Tune in to the next episode of whatever show you are just watching and watch other shows featuring Bill. He made me say that because he's a narcissist. Okay, bye.